Okay. Hi there. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? I feel Good. like I haven't seen you in 10 years since we haven't had I know. two in-person shows, but hey. It's sad. You it's are. Sad. I know. At least we get to hang out here for it's better than nothing, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. Well, um, I'll just introduce all of us. So I'm Melissa McLeod from The Wool and the Floss, um, and I'm here in Gross Point, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. Um, and with my uh, good friend, Megan Holmes from the Needlepoint Clubhouse, we're the Pointing It Out team. And um, I will introduce you to my good friend, Melissa Prince as well, um, who is a fabulous designer and most people know that and know of her. Um, I'm gonna give you my little personal background, which is um, this is gonna air on Thanksgiving weekend, Saturday night. And um, there are two people in this industry that were super duper helpful to me when I opened the store. One is Diane Bertelson from Pepperary Designs. She's and the great. other one, of course, is Melissa Prince. So we, um, I opened the shop in May of 2017. Is that right? Yes, May of 2017. It's only been that long. Wow. Crazy, I know. Seems like forever now. So three and a half years, and um, I went to our, my first market in. Were we in Cleveland or Columbus that year? Columbus? No. I, I think that was the last Columbus year. It was Ohio. How about that? It was the Ohio show. Yes. Yeah. So I drove down like a deer in headlights. I had been to markets with my old owner, but I'd never been the one let's say signing the checks so yeah. and there were not that many needlepoint vendors there I distinctly remember there were 28 to be honest and I was so Our sad to that, be that there were so few there and um I ended up spending quite about a lot of time with you in your booth that day so um and that's kind of where we first met and got to know each other and um you were just super duper helpful to me ever since then, um, and especially that first year when I really didn't know what the heck I was doing. So I am very thankful to you. So that's, I want to so yes, yes. So that's kind of how we're connected, but no one really cares about that. But I just think that there's, this is a really fabulous industry with people on the whole being really collaborative and really helpful to each other, but there's always a special couple shining stars and you are definitely one of them. So oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's going to be this big. So yeah, so um, obviously we know your fabulous needlepoint line, but let's back up and start with like where you are, where you grew up, where you went to school, all those fun things. Well, I'm sitting here in Plano, Texas, which is, I know it sounds like a third world country or something, but it's a nice suburb of Dallas, just yeah. a little bit north of Dallas. And um, we have lived here for 30 two, three years. Okay. And um, we came here via uh, Arizona. And my husband was offered a transfer. And they said, Do you want Baltimore? Do you want Dallas? And I said, yes. So that's how we ended up here. Now was your draw the warm weather? Are you warm? warm well, actually, the draw was being farther away from his family. Uh oh, <laughs> no, truthfully, it was their East Coast. Uh -oh. But um, no, we chose Dallas and we've been here ever since. And I'm, you know, it's a great place to raise kids. So it was wonderful. And you have two daughters, is that right? Two daughters and a son. I never hear about your son. Well, that's because he doesn't go to shows, obviously. But <laughs> I, have the girls, I have the girls show up periodically. Now, Stephanie, that everyone seems to know, is, is my middle daughter. And she always helps me at shows, for which I am eternally grateful. And I met and, her at that uh, first show with you. And then periodically, um, Hillary, the youngest one, will will come, and so you never know. Too fun. And so, did but, you raise your children obviously in Dallas? But now they're yeah. all far afield, I believe, aren't they? They're what? They are all far afield from you. No, um, actually, my youngest one is here now. She's at UT Southwestern. Ah, and so, okay. Yeah. And Stephanie was in Rochester at one point. Roger, well, she's still there. Rochester, New York, not Rochester, I don't Michigan. I going anywhere. I think she's going to be, you know, she's a Rochester girl now. Good, good. Nice, nice. And you still have a cute little doggy at home, I think, though, don't you? I do. And she's quiet right now. How about that? Well, I think she's sitting with my husband. She likes to nap in his work chair with him. Oh, good, good. 
Um, so you, did you grow up in Arizona? No, um, actually I grew up in New York. Okay. And my parents, um, by the time I was, you know, a toddler or whatever, moved to Long Island to get out of the city as, you know, they're one to do. But um, my father was, have you ever, you know, seen the show Mad Men? Oh, yes. That, he was Don Draper, basically. And That's a so, great needlepoint binge watch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, anyway, then he uh, was told by doctors to get out of advertising because it was killing him. And so he said, okay. And he had always been an art. He was an artist himself and studied it and huh. collected, et cetera. So he said, okay, we're going to go to Arizona. And he opened up the gallery and traveled around, became a curator. And I'm starting that, to see that's, where, that's where the art came in. Exactly. Life. Exactly. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Good, good. And so did you, I think that I recall that you had a vastly different profession before you were a needlepoint designer. Is that correct? I started out out of school as an accountant, but in business and accounting. Yeah, I know. I hated it with a purple passion. I'll be honest. It is so much the farthest thing from my personality now that I, I, I would, you'd have to string me up by my toes. There's um, not a lot of artists that could even be an accountant. Like it's such different parts of the brain. So, yeah. yeah. So I did that. And then when I gave birth to my son, it was like, mm, I'm not leaving this kid. So I left and it was like the perfect time and reason and everything else to do it. So I stayed home for a number of years with the kids. And then I went back and I went into, I had been controller for a newspaper. So I went into the local newspaper just to get a job, something just to get my feet wet because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I ended up in advertising. And then from there, I ended up in a national advertising situation, mm -hmm. which was fabulous, which I did for years. And it was the most fun I've ever had. I loved it. It and was, what, I worked with fabulous people. What side of the advertising world were you in? Media. Okay. And I worked with incredible people and researchers and Oh, it was awesome. I loved it. And then they um, decided to close the business. It was family owned. And so you know how things happen in family businesses. Right, right. So a couple of them were starting up again. They asked me if I would join them. I said, you know what? At this point in life, if I'm going to start from scratch, I'm going to do something that's mine. I love you guys, but. Gotcha. So I was sitting around in my at a conversion up here, painting something for one of my kids' apartments, uh, a canvas, not a needlepoint. Right. And my girlfriend came over and said, you know, that would really be a cool needlepoint canvas. And she's the one that taught me how to very stitch very rudimentally, whatever. That's just gonna be my question. So you were you were a stitcher before you were a canvas designer, which is well novice. if you want to call it that, I'm I'm very much a novice. <laughs> I am. I've I've never, you know. So um but I get through, I mean, I do little things for myself, for the kids. Um, so from there, I took a couple of canvases over to our local shop in Plano, a woman named Luann, who, Morgan, who was wonderful to me. And she said, yeah, I'll put those up. And then she called me the next day and she said, I sold them. What else have you got? So I started, so I started painting. And then she said, you know, you really should go to a show. And I said, well, what do you do? So she told me some basics, I know. And then she said- And when was this? Oh God, 11 some years ago, maybe 12 now. So 2010, 2008. Yeah, nine, nine to 10, it was somewhere in there. Oh, so just like when the economy's in the crapper and you decide to start a new business, good job. There you go. <laughs> but I still kept some media clients that, that helped keep me going. So um, then she said, she said, you know, you're, I said, well, how do you, I mean, I can't sit there and paint all day. She goes, you need a painting service. So she basically guided me through and she said, you know what, here's Kelly Clark's phone number. I bet she'll help you and tell you some things. Aww. So she did. And um, I got a painting service. I went to the first show and I made money in Ohio. It was Columbus. <laughs> I do remember that distinctly. And um, I came back and then it was full speed ahead. 
Wow. And so what were your first pieces? Do you remember that? Tuscan tiles. And are they still I've since retired? Okay. Yeah. That has to be I, a I like to I retire things. I don't, you know, I don't want a line of a thousand pieces. I think that's ridiculous. So those those have been retired. Plus, I it, you know, my early stuff I could do better now. Right. Now I know what I'm doing, right? We you all know? learn as we go. Most yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, good. Um, so we've talked about all your other careers and when you started. Um, so you have a very distinct style, I think. Like for most people, they can they can spot a Melissa Prince because it's just so different from everyone else's in all the best ways. Um, and has that developed over time, or do you think like that's when you well, say you're you're funny pregnant? because I think I've got a few styles. I mean, I don't do necessarily do a floral the way I do a movie or travel coaster or a dog. You know, I think they're I think they're all different styles, don't you? Well, yes, but you I guess it's like you've got a great color sense and oh, you color. tend to paint like bigger open spaces when and a bigger piece. It's really great for stitchers, which is funny that you say you're not a super like in-depth stitcher. No, but I did that in mind because I've had advice from a lot of great retailers and people that stitch and, you know. Right. And they, I listen. Well, I, I it, you can tell, cause I, th I think all of your things as fabulous as they are, they might be intimidating for like half a second. And then when you really boil them down to it, you're like, oh, this is actually really stitchable. Like it, they're very easy to stitch when you dive in. So that's great. And you were um, the queen of the doggies. Well, I, I did bring one of the dogs over. Oh, so good. this was the one that um, oh, I got it. That's year. my grand dog. So I did this one last year for the Stitch Club Ornament Exchange. And that's yeah. where you noticed it. And you said, oh, well, will you do a stitch guide for that? And then, then we did five. So <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> but I'm, I may be um, out of flower and dog ideas. We may have tapped me out. I don't know. <laughs> Well, but there, I mean, there's more coming down the pike. So, you know, everybody well, has. The nice thing is that people will actually write to me and say, hey, have you considered doing a blah, blah, blah? And right. sometimes it's like, no. And sometimes it's like, oh, that's a good idea. Okay. So. So you seem to have like, you, you and Diane, another thing you two both have in common, not that this is all about you and Diane, but um, Diane and you, to me, are one of the, are two of the people that do dogs really, really well. And Megan calls me the dog queen. She thinks that I know all the dog canvases. And when I don't know who made a dog canvas, she's very disappointed in me. Um, but you do really great dogs. So have you always had dogs in your life? Is that something? Always, always. Yeah. I grew up with dogs and I have always had a dog or two. That's, that's what I figured. And you do some cats as well. We don't want to live out, leave out the cat. No, I've done a couple of cats and I've never owned a cat in my life. I, I admit it. So um, I have to learn more about them to paint them. But um, I mean, I literally look at thousands of photographs before I zero in on, you know, something to work with. Oh, well, they're, they are fabulous. And you it seems like you do a lot of wildlife as well. Like there's a lot of birds I can think of. Yeah, of, I did the know. Birds of America, which were the very common backyard guys and Patricia Sohn and Creative Stitches did all the guides for that. So there's a goldfinch and a blue jay and a cardinal and a painted bunting and oh, a little kingfisher. And then I did uh, rare birds of North America where some were more unusual like a hoopoe and you know, uh, blue bunting and things like that. So anyway, there are a couple of bird series. And then I did some larger um, African birds. I did a kingfisher and then that big hoopoe. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and um, yeah, so I've done a lot, I've, I've done a lot there. And then of course, those are very different from the Christmas animals. Right. So. Yeah, and I'm not, I'll admit, I'm not as familiar with your birds because this is like a true confession. If Carolyn Hedge Baird had not written her bird stitch, her bird book that has all the stitches for birds in it, 
Yeah. Could not stitch a bird to save my life. Like I just don't get birds. So yeah. you know, now that I have Carolyn's book in my back pocket, I can, I can brave some birds like I did yeah. with deer and, deer and fawn. Yes. Or yeah. fawn and cardinal. Sorry, I said that backwards, but yeah. Right, right. Well, there is a bigger one. Two yeah. fawns and cardinals. Yes, yeah. And then the deer with the cardinal. Everybody's got to have cardinals. Oh, and I love those because they're they're Christmassy, wintry. Yeah, they could kind of go either way, but they're not in your class. And it's red. I mean, who doesn't love, you know, red is great. I love, I mean, I'm all about paint. Yes, yes. And I'll there's be- all your paints behind you. <laughs> yes, those are all paints. So is this where you paint? Is this your yeah. studio or you're sitting at your desk? To my right is a disaster area with 500 paint bottles on it and all kinds of things going on. Yeah. Well, good. And do you paint most days? Yes and no. There's a lot, you know, when you're the chief cook and, and bottle washer, you have days where you've got to do administrative stuff and right. ship. And the minute I get a painting box in, it's like, okay, everything stops when we do that. We get those orders out. So right. especially now because people are like ready. Right. Well, these poor painting services are overwhelmed. And so you're just doing your best to pop them out. Yeah. The door the second and we all know. are. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but you guys get the brunt of it. I feel badly all the retailers get. Well, I would say that 99% of my customers are super patient. They've been around the block a few times yeah. and they realize it. And we, Megan and I have tried our best to educate people. Like this is a worldwide industry. Like people don't realize that. They think that you paint every single, some people when they first start stitching, let me phrase that differently. Um, think that you sit down and you paint all of these canvases, but you're just the be a wizzled little old woman with a hunchback. If I were doing that, it would be just the pits. I can't imagine. Right. So you're creating the master design and then there's a team of fabulous replicators mm-hmm. across the world that are creating yep. the volume of canvases for all exactly. of the stitchers. So yeah, it doesn't happen quickly because um, they're still hand painted. Um, they are hand painted and they do beautiful work and it's um, you know I'm very happy with the job they do yeah I just wish there were twice as many of them correct they they can't do it any faster but yeah maybe maybe more will be born (laughs) yeah I know right Uh, so speaking of world world uh things you also have a phenomenal travel series and I'm not sure everyone is as familiar with those as they should be because they again are just you don't just like paint something you expect your pieces are always a little unexpected and I love that about them they are I mean I have some here if you want to see for instance um I do um I put them in two categories U.S. and then all the other international. So um, I don't know if we could see, that's Canada. Oh I like God. to do a different twist on these things because um, everybody does the rounds and they put the name on there and then they do you know, the five little elements of whatever it is, but I have a rather warped sense of humor. So <laughs> I did uh, the Bermuda Triangle. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, oh, this is one of my favorites. It's the Galapagos with the blue-footed booby. Oh, I love that. That's one of those places that's on my bucket list someday. Oh, I know. Me too. Oh my gosh. And they have those little bitty red crabs too. I did. Oh, this is a fun one. Uh, it's London, but the queen is in the box. So it says Royal up here and she's holding the corgi on a leash. And that's why he's standing at attention. I love it. And I just finished watching the newest season of The Crown last night. If you haven't watched I it. I did too. We finished binging last night. No, I was sad when it was over. Ugh. There you oh, go. Thank you. That, and was, so that was for you. There's the unexpected. So Melissa did create that uh, initially, uh, I think a year ago um, for me. And I just said, can you do a Detroit travel coaster? And I didn't give yep. her any guidance and that that fabulous old car with the Motown and it just, it was great. I've had a lot of people stitch that and we, we always have it in the shop because it's phenomenal. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 Oh, and then we got, we have good old U.S. Here's Nashville. Oh, I love that. That was my last place I worked before the shutdown. That's awesome. Yep. So there's, there's lots. I mean, I've done, I've done about 50, I think, travel guys. 
Yes. So we have people that come in quite often and they say, I want to do a travel piece for wherever. And I have a list of different places that they can look in there. I was like, oh, I didn't realize that Melissa Prince did travel coasters or uh, yeah, travel coasters. That's what you call them. Mm -hmm. So they're four inch squares, right? Four inch squares. And then I try to make some of them, you know, like good for multiple places like wine country. Oh, I love it. It could be upstate New York or it could be Sonoma or, you know. Right. Where else do we have wine country? There's even one in Texas. That would look really great in one of those. Um, our, our acrylic guy does, um, but he calls yes. them weights. I call them wine coasters. <laughs> it depends what's more important to you. I think a wine coaster is way more fun. Wine than coaster, I think is good. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Great in this industry, most certainly. Yes, yes. And then um, New York, I actually put the subway, some of the subway lines on there. That's what those colors and letters oh, are. Great. Yeah. So, anyway, so they're different. Very fun. Um, be different. Um, and then, so that the other thing that you do in coasters, I think, um, is so creative and genius are your movie coasters. Oh, they're fun. They're so really how did fun. Apple series start? When did it start? Probably about God, five, four or five years ago, maybe. Oh, is that all? Wow. Yeah. Like they've been around forever. I know. But that was one of those, I don't sleep. So that was one of those 2 a.m. things. So you have, uh, how many do you have of them? Probably 50 at least. Oh God, no, there's more like 100 and, 150, I think. Oh, okay. So what, so what, what how, how did that whole series get born? Did you just wake up at 2 a.m. one day thinking about yeah. a movie and thought I'm gonna spit this out so I can go back to bed? <laughs> yeah, so I, um, no, I just, I just started doing them. I'd, I don't know what it was that made me think of it. It just hit me. That's what happens. Things sometimes just hit you, you know? Oh, and they're kind of like little puzzles to me too. So you must be someone. Well, one of the fun things that some retailers have done with them is they'll take a number of them and put them up on a board and play a game. You know, if you guess all of these movies correctly, we'll give you X percent off on whatever. And that's, and that's a lot of fun, I think, for the people. And I did that in my, one of my showrooms once. I did um, travel coasters and then movies on another side. And it was, okay, if you can match the movie location, the two coasters, then <laughs> yeah, you can, you'll win a set of whatever. And someone won four coasters. So that was nice. fun. Nice, good. <laughs> Oh, well, and one of, I think you're probably most popular right now is from, what's the name of the movie? Um, the RBG movie. Oh, on the basis of sex. Basis of sex. Thank you. I should have remembered that. Um, I'm sure those are flying out the door with all the RBG. They are, and I, I wish I had had the foresight. I mean, I didn't expect her to pass away, but that always, you know, spurred people on. Um, right had I known. <laughs> well, I know. We've sold a number of them. In December. Yes. Well, yours is phenomenal. I think um, there, there's a number of them out there and I really appreciate yours. So thank you. It's I know I see them periodically and it's like, hmm, okay. Um, well, good. So um, how, how, many, um, how many pieces are in your line, do you think? Probably 300 something. And you've also retired, you said you retire things regularly. I do. And that must be, is that hard? Is it like, like throwing your babies out the window? <laughs> no, actually, because if I retire it, it's like, I, <clears throat> I either didn't think it was that great to begin with or something else. And from my early days, I mean, there were a lot of things that needed to go. So they were easy, easier decisions than I would think, it sounds like. Well, that and the other thing is if, you know, with our painters, if you don't reorder it within a two-year period, they retire it for you and send you your, your model back. Interesting. So you have to order quick if you still want it, you know, if you over-ordered or something. Right. You know, 30 copies when you should have had six, then, you know, you can need to order that again unless you want that thing retired. And that has to be, I always think about that because as a retailer, obviously I have to kind of guess what my customers are going to like. And you as a wholesaler have to do that, but times a lot more people. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, and it's funny. You just, like I had something during the virtual show, 
a couple of weeks ago and it was never an enormous seller, but it flew. So funny. I just put it in. So I'm doing, I'm doing a companion piece for it now because someone requested it. It was this piece. I don't have a canvas even, I'm sold out. Oh, I do remember that piece, that orchid mm -hmm. that's really pretty. So I'm doing a companion for that. So just when you thought it was on its way out, huh? <laughs> No, I didn't think it was going to be on its way out. I just didn't realize it was as hot as it was going to be. But everything now is that blue and white porcelain. Right. So. And is that cat that's with the blue and white porcelain? Is that a new piece? Because that's. Yes, really that's. Yes, that's relatively new. The black cat. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty. So that for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, it's front and center on her on Melissa's um, website, website, which is melissaprincedesigns.com, right? That's right. That. Yeah, so check that out. It's really, really pretty. I, I for whatever reason, we sell tons of dog canvases and I'll bring in cat canvases and they sit here. And I don't know why, because you'd think that cat people would be just as excited about stitching cats as dog people. And well, maybe there are a lot of cat people. Yeah. I know one in particular really wants a Maine Coon, but then I don't remember who it was. And there, I looked up Maine Coons and there's probably... 10 varieties of Maine Coons. And it's like, and if you don't hit the right cap, then you've just about, right. it, then you've blown it. Right, right, right. Well, you, that that cat particularly caught my eye. Um, but I'm nervous of bringing in cat canvases because my people don't buy them. I don't know why. So my cat people need to come out of the woodworks and I'll, I'll support them more. <laughs> I think, well, I think in online stores, you know, the online version of your shop, that's, you know, where more people may see things. Right, right. Yeah. Of course, of course. Um, and so I know you said that you just kind of like, sometimes things just pop into your head, but are there particular things that inspire you? Like where do you get a lot of your ideas? Well, um, a good example is when my middle daughter, Stephanie, that helps who was first out of school, she moved to New York and she was living in Brooklyn. And I went to visit her in the fall and that was a year of a horrible, horrible drought and all of the orange pumpkin farmers lost their crops. It was that severe. But the organic guys and the specialty growers all had water and everything else they needed. So they were growing the blue and white ones. So on every stoop in Brooklyn were these beautiful blue and white pumpkins, you know, with the mums and all of that. And it was gorgeous. I said, I have got to paint those. So I came back and I painted them. So that was inspiration. Yes, yeah, Sarah, um, <clears throat> when, when life is normal, we have a national teacher here who's taught all over the place. Um, her name is Kathy Fenchel. And I have to think about it really carefully because I get Kathy Fenchel and Kathy Schenkel confused off my tongue. But Kathy Fenchel lives in Michigan and she's done a fabulous stitch guide for that blue pumpkin. Yeah, yes. And so, um, and that's, that is still a bestseller. I mean, it's one of the older pieces, but that that's will right. never retire. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of fun. Um, what else haven't we talked about? So what, what is, you said that's one of your bestsellers. Do, do you know what your bestseller is or do you not have a particular one? Well, it, um, they go in waves. For instance, you know, the RBG of late and just prior to that, it was Downton Abbey series. Oh yes, we had that. Uh-huh. And um, the blue pumpkin always. And now that fawn, the little four inch fawn with the cardinal. Well, I think I've sold about 50 of them. So. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's, um, and it's still going strong. So. Yes. I had, um, I did the first one of that at the beginning of the shutdown because I just felt like I needed to do something to feel connected with my stitchers. And I think we had 10 of us that did it. And then I just had a new set, a new group take off. And I think there were 25 of them. And I think I've got 10 more coming up. So it was, mm. that was a really, really beautiful piece to stitch. I really enjoyed it. And I wanted to stitch the bigger piece. I know Susie Valerie was going to be teaching that, the bigger piece, correct? The, and, um, the deer. Yes. Patricia Sohn did a stitch guide for the two fawns. Okay. The, They're all the yeah, same series. One. And there had been a class scheduled and of course then we were all shut down. Yes, because I had talked to Susie about maybe teaching that here and that was maybe the end of February. So we never finished that conversation. So 
<laughs> another day. Yeah. We'll, yeah. See. we'll see. It's a, it is a beautiful series. Um, and what is, uh, well, we talked briefly about your worst seller, which I thought was hysterical. So you tell me what your worst seller is. It's, uh, I, I actually pulled it out because obviously. I have it here too, because you told me what it was. And I started. I have copies of it because nobody's buying the thing. <laughs> I, so I also have it here. Here we go. We need to dare someone to do this. I, I mean, think it is so. Yeah, I funny. think it's funny, but I don't, I've got a warped sense of humor. I know it. Um. Well, and this is why I probably have it in my shop because I have kind of a warped sense of humor too. And that's probably why I like you. But so this much. was based on that stupid Cialis commercial. Remember? And it makes no sense. Why are they in bathtubs? It's, you know, hysterical. it's, I know it's ridiculous, but I thought that it kind of looks like they were on a psychedelic kind of thing there or something. I love it. And uh, for those, I don't know if you can read it. There we go. Do not disturb. So it is right, just right. like perfect do not disturb sign for your bedroom door. I think it's a riot. So I know. I think it'd be great to put it on a guest room door and really embarrass your, <laughs> your guests. <laughs> I think it's awesome. So I'm hoping that usually in uh, many of these cases, Megan and I ask a lot of designers that question and then people go, oh, I can't believe no one buys that and they run out and buy it. So hopefully you'll get a little run on it because, <laughs> and I've got one here for those who want it. I there think you go. there you go. I love it. Um, and do you have a personal like favorite part of your line or are they, is that like asking what your favorite child is? It's, it is kind of asking like, what is my favorite child? I'm, um, I love dogs. I'm really enjoying doing the dogs. They're so fabulous. I love and stitching. Like I said, I stitched five of them. I love stitching every single one. They were great. And I love doing the movies. I mean, that to me is just, you know, it's, it's fun. I, you know, I try to think of a good scene or symbolism or something in the movie and, and come up with something. We had your trunk show here, so I think last spring, maybe I can't remember, but sometime not too long ago. Um, and Liz, who's my yarn manager, is also a stitcher, and she um, is in the middle of stitching four of them, and I think she's almost done. So I, but she's doing all four because she's going to make an open box to put next to her TV to hold all the remote controls. Oh, so that's, that's cute! Really, a great idea. I know another shop had um, tables made. Oh, fancy. Glass top tables by, um, they did it at, uh, how do you, be, the Arkansas, the Bijou. Bijou, Bijou, Bijou. Yeah, whatever. I know I can never get that name right. It drives me crazy. But I anyway, they, they created tables and the woman gave um, two of her kids each a table for Christmas or something. With the I, want, I want to be her kid. That's awesome. I know, right? <laughs> That was a nice Christmas gift. Yes, yes. So I can see why those are those are your favorites because they're some of my favorites too. So, well, they make you happy. I mean, it makes you think of a movie that you really enjoyed, and it makes you happy. Well, and and for those who aren't terribly familiar with your movie coasters, you need to go to Melissa's site and look the movie coaster section because they're just super clever. They're all like kind of little puzzles, I think, to figure out which ones are which. Um, and some of them, like, you'll instantly know, and others you really have to think about. So mm -hmm. maybe, it's, maybe it's more you have to think about them if they're not a movie that you personally are super familiar with. Maybe that's why some are easier than Well, others. I painted La La Land, and I hated the movie. I haven't <laughs> seen it. Oh, it's awful. Don't bother. <laughs> I just, and I think it got the award. Well, sometimes that's the way, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, but like you're pretty, uh, not, is it pretty in pink? Yeah, that has the, uh, the, cause I was, I was graduated from high school in 1985. Oh, I bet you're thinking of 16 Candles. 16 Candles, thank you. Yeah, I was, I was in that John Hughes era of movies. Yeah. And the 16 Small Candles wrinkle. with the underwear is just a crack up. I mean, they just, <laughs> they, make me, they make me laugh. So you can, you can see your sense of humor in your, um, well, and then Carol, Calendar Girls. I mean, one of my daughters was horrified. You can't do that. I said, they're fairies. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a big movie, too. I mean, you know. Well, um, what's coming up? What's coming up the pike? I don't know if we'll have a show in real life anytime soon, but I'm sure you're always planning for the, that. Well, we plan for, I don't know, mentally, I just need to plan for a show because it makes you 
move ahead and do, you know, and paint, paint, paint. Um, but I have a feeling we'll be virtual in the spring. I don't think, you know, I don't think the vaccine is going to be out there enough. Right, yeah. right. I'm sure you're right, which is super sad. But you know, I um, better be safe. I mean, I think we all made the best of the virtual market. You and I have talked about that offline. Um, you know, it was it the same as being to get all together? Of course not. Was it the same to be able to see the canvases? Of course not. But it was really darn great to have an opportunity to see everybody's new things. And yeah, and I hope you know, it was funny how few people zoomed. I mean, we were all on Zoom for the thing. But I only had a couple people Zoom. Yeah. They'd just go on and leave you messages. Yes. So. Well, but we it was it was a decent platform. I mean, there's always work to be done when you do something for the first time. But um, well, I think they're going to spiff it up for next time. Yeah. Well, I certainly managed to spend a lot of money. My customers are spending money with me, so I'm spending money with you all. So. Yeah. And we love it. Yes. Yeah. So do you have um, anything you're working on for the next show that you want to talk well, about? I'm, well, I'm working on the companion piece for the blue and white thing. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I'll be doing some more movies. Good. I'll be doing some more uh, little fuzzy friends. Okay. Um, I'll be doing more travel. Okay. So expanding um, your Yeah. So yeah. More letters. The letters that oh, I started. Yes. So people might not be familiar with those because that was new for this virtual market, correct? Right, it was. So they are six by six. Is that what I recall? How big yes, are six by six. Six by six. And they're, I think you call them your golden letters. Golden letters. The letter, it's, you know, they're kind of formal looking a little, the letter. And then whatever that letter happens to represent. Yes. I did a lighthouse for L and R for rooster and... B for my B. favorite, my a B for B. A B for B. I have my B. I so I did. I believe I ordered the rooster and the B. I love them both. So both lighthouse was tempting too, but it seemed a little stormy and like it was stormy. Happy as some of your things usually are, and I'm all about collecting happy right now. So <laughs> in a <laughs> different was, era, I might have been attracted to the lighthouse. <laughs> why could that be? Yeah, I know. <laughs> but they're all beautifully done and that um Eight we, for hummingbird. we sell a lot of those um really beautiful wood boxes by Sudbury and there's a I think it's yeah. called a Laura box that's a six by six opening so I thought that would be really pretty in those oh really it would yeah, yeah. so that was super exciting so you'll add on to those so I'm excited to see what maybe you'll do for M since you're an M too yeah. I'm an M too Yes, I am. That's a lot of pressure. Uh, well, have we not covered anything? Is there anything we haven't talked about that you'd like to share? Gosh, I don't think so. Aww. Well, I so appreciate you spending time with me. And again, you know, not to be sappy, but you have been super helpful to me as I've grown as a store owner. So I appreciate Well, you have been fabulous to work with too. And you know, it's really nice to know people that are equally as professional as you know you hope them to be <laughs> well you know it's it's this is an interesting business you know true. and um i don't know we both have business backgrounds so it's interesting from that standpoint well i i am glad we connected from the get-go because you've been a special part of my work life here and um maybe it's because we're both melissa's i don't know but <laughs> well that might have something to do with it <laughs> can't go wrong with another Melissa. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, for those of you that are just joining us for the first time, um, make sure you subscribe to the Pointing It Out channel, and then you'll get a little notification um, when we have a new episode. And that helps other stitchers find us because we like to share the love. So thank you. And I appreciate your time, my dear. And um, I will catch up with you soon. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. I always have to figure out how to stop recording. It's my there we go.